Welcome to Juggling for Stress Release at the T at TCDL. My name is Tava Tang. I use she, her pronouns. I am the uh, program coordinator at the University of Texas at Austin and a member of the TCDL planning committee. I'm pleased to be your session moderator today. Um, for some housekeeping, uh, Texas Digital Library and TCDL planning committee are dedicated to providing an experience for everyone that is free from all forms of harassment and inclusive of all people. Um, we ask that everyone here today be considerate and respectful in speech and action and refrain from uh, demeaning, discriminatory, or harassing behavior and speech and be mindful of your environment and your fellow participants. Um, the session will run approximately 15 minutes. Please feel free to take breaks as you need. I invite you to say hello in chat and let us know where you're joining from, share resources, and or engage with today's session. I'll be watching for your questions in the chat and share them with our speaker. Um, and now on with the show, I'm pleased to introduce our first, our speaker, Philip Clark. So I'm gonna hand it over to you. Cool. Thank you, Tao. Um, hi, uh, my name is Philip Clark. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. And uh, today I am gonna share with you guys some juggling. So, oh, hey Tao, can you give me screen sharing access? Uh, all right. Uh, so glad you guys are here. Uh, I I think I got very excited about teaching juggling to you all, um, and I maybe overdid the number of slides here. So we have a lot to to throw in here, but um, for the most part, it should be lots of fun. So uh, to start with, though, uh, I'm going to kind of go back and forth between teaching how to juggle, uh, and then also some of the uh, I don't know, the history, the philosophy, the ideology behind uh, juggling. So to start with, I say you should grab an object, um, maybe a juggling ball or a lime. Um, hopefully if you've got like a bean bag, it's good. Usually you want something that uh, doesn't bounce too much when you when you try and catch it. So tennis balls work, um, but they can be a little bit tricky. Also, when you're throwing, make sure you're you know aware of uh, objects around that might uh, uh be be a bit of trouble all right yes okay so to start with you should uh throw your ball so grab a ball and then throw it back and forth um about eye height you could do a little bit higher the higher you throw the the, the more time you'll have to react um it also helps, I'm gonna stand back up. Hopefully you can still hear me. It helps to stand up. So uh, I know maybe you've been sitting a lot uh, or maybe you have a standing desk, that'd be nice. Uh, and then just throw it back and forth. You want like a nice arc about eye height uh, to get you going. So our primary goal today is to learn how to juggle uh, even just a little bit. So I'll get you all of the, uh, <laughs> all of the basics down and hopefully that will will be enough to to get you set on your juggling careers from here on out um so uh one of my first tips for juggling one ball is the uh, the way in which you throw it and so you're going to want to sort of uh do what i think of this the wax on wax off so if you move your hands kind of like sideways juggling is more of a sideways movement instead of a front to back so you, your arm kind of goes like this normally so your arm kind of moves this way often but you're going to want to try and move it to the side sort of in these planes like this and that will help a lot later it'll help keep you from sort of running around the room which you might end up doing cool so again uh going back and forth between these screen sharing so hopefully that's not too distracting Uh, you want to throw to approximately eye level. Um, as I said, my name is Philip Clark, um, and I've been juggling for about 20, 25 years. Um, and I first learned from a book called Juggling for the Complete Klutz. I think it came out in sort of the 70s and 80s. So it's been around for quite a while. 
um, and it is uh, sort of a phenomena that that really took off and taught a lot of people how to juggle. Uh, if you can find it, I recommend getting it. It's great. It's, uh, it's it's really well written and it's pretty simple. It's a very very short read with big text, so easy to do. Um, I'm a computer science teacher in Portland, Oregon, but I also teach unicycling and juggling at Camp Winter Rainbow in Northern California. I also organize a unicycle hockey team up here in Portland, Oregon. So, uh, juggling, uh, as you know, juggling in general is to throw stuff in the air, and hopefully you guys are still throwing stuff up in the air. Uh, it doesn't always mean that though, and we'll see just a little bit later how it can just mean any sort of object manipulation. So the three most common props are juggling balls, um, but also juggling clubs is uh, super, super common. And um, probably my least favorite, but it's still kind of fun, are rings. So you can use any of those objects. Almost everybody starts with balls. Um, there are other types of juggling, uh, cigar boxes, where you sort of move these cigar boxes, uh, hats. I've seen a lot of people juggle with hats, the pretty common prop. And contact juggling, where you sort of manipulate an object. Um, maybe you have seen <laughs> chainsaws indeed, yes. <laughs> um, uh, contact juggling means you don't actually let go of the objects usually. Um, and there's some sort of combinations where you'll do, you'll see people do rolls or uh, sort of movements with the juggling club off of your body. So contact juggling, probably most famous from the 80s movie, The Labyrinth, if you've seen that. Uh, Michael Bowen was, was pretty famous in there. So uh, juggling belongs to this sort of larger collection of flow arts. Um, where you're just sort of manipulating prop, whether it's poi that you're spinning, rope dart, double sticks, it's sort of just a, a general category of flow arts. And, and flow arts is this idea that um, you're sort of manipulating an object uh, and sort of trying to get into these sort of flowy states. Uh, it's really neat. Once you there will be this moment where you just kind of get juggling and it and it just suddenly makes sense. For a while, you'll be frustrated, you'll be confused, but then you just sort of get it and it'll become automatic. Okay, so make sure you're relaxed. You're gonna drop the ball a lot, but that's okay. You can always pick it up and keep on going. So let's move on to two ball juggling. So hopefully you've got Two uh, two balls, one for your right hand, one for your left hand. And your task right now is to name each of your hands, one and two. Uh, you can pick either hand. I'm right-handed, and I almost always start with my right. Um, that's my you know stronger hand. So you're gonna juggle one, two, one, two. You have to be careful. Your goal is to take a pause in between there. You're going to throw one ball and then the other. You're going to try and let it get up to sort of your peak of like its path, which again is hopefully about eye height, maybe above just above your head. And you want it to look something like this one, two, one, two. The biggest trouble here, this is this is like the biggest challenge to learning how to juggle is that your brain is going to short circuit. Uh, and what it's going to try and do is pass the ball. So you're throwing this one and your brain's going to panic. It's like, I don't have a hand to catch with. And so it's going to try and scoop this hand over here. It's going to cheat. You can kind of do that. It is possible to juggle that way, but it is extraordinarily difficult. So uh, don't do this. So don't try that. Your goal is to just throw it one, two. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. All right. So what that will look like. So again, you can see me a little bit better here. One, two. One, two. Take a big, long pause in between those if you can. You want to throw again when it 
when the first ball is kind of at its peak there. So one, two, one, two. Uh, and they probably are going to go all over. How's that going out there? Anybody trying it? Again, you want to look at it's going well, but then my dog grabbed the one I dropped. So what are you going to oh. do? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you do have to look out for your, your pets and stuff. <laughs> right. I used to have a cat who would come and like come near me when I was juggling. It was like, I'm going to drop things on you. <laughs> yeah. Most people do have a one hand that is 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 better than the other. Obviously, you get your dominant hand. But <laughs> all the struggles of juggling, losing losing <laughs> your juggling props. Um, the better the it makes a big difference. If you have something too light, uh, you'll lose them a lot more. Um, <laughs> that's great. You guys look like you're doing wonderful. All right. Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you in the chat. All right. So you're going to keep practicing doing one, two, one, two, as much as you can. And uh, oh, yeah, I see some people. Hey. Y'all are brave. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. Hey, you got it. You'll be, you'll be impressed at how quickly you'll pick this up. <laughs> All right. So keep practicing one two, your one twos as we keep going going. Oh, it's good to see your faces. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a high school computer science teacher, and um, I appreciate you guys being brave and showing your faces. When I was teaching, they would almost never <laughs> be on screen. So thank you. Um, so uh, juggling goes back a long, long time. Uh, even back to the ancient Egyptians, they had some tombs where so there were some recordings of, of, of jugglers. So it's been around for over 4,000 years, which is is kind of incredible to think about. Um, and then, of course, I think most people associate juggling maybe with the medieval times, uh, where jesters of the court and fools of the court would would perform tricks, especially juggling. Uh, and even the word juggle uh, might have its right origins in the word to jest or to perform tricks. So kind of combination of that. Um, and this idea of the fools in the court or somebody who is uh, sort of being light and having a lot of levity within a like serious realm, I think speaks a lot to juggling and modern circuits. So in the 1700s, uh, the modern circus was born. And uh, in circus, there's always this uh, contradiction between the sort of ringmaster who's trying to keep charge of everything and the jesters who are uh, or the clowns who are, who are silly and trying to cause havoc. And the circus can't exist without both of those at the same time. I think of juggling as much the same. Your brain is like struggling really hard at first to get these. And so it's thinking really hard as like the sort of ringmaster. But then eventually it gets fun and it becomes this automatic process, which is sort of the, uh, you know, the idea of the clown or, or the fun of the circus. Okay, so hopefully your one twos are going really well. Your next step is to switch which hand starts. So instead of going one, two, you're going to go two, one. So one, two is that direction, but now you're gonna pick the other hand, right? You've named your hands one and two. You're gonna go two, one. And it's probably gonna feel a little bit more awkward Right, you're going the opposite direction. Probably starting with your less good hand in my hand, in case the left. So two, one, two, one, two, one. Oh, yeah. Cool. So now for a few minutes, you're going to practice your two ones, your verses. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Vitamins everywhere. <laughs> All right. So uh, another wonderful aspect of uh, juggling is uh, sort of the, the things that can happen to your brain with it. Um, 
it seems to, according to a few studies, increase your gray matter in sort of the visual cortexes, uh, specifically ones with like sort of uh, determining where complex objects are moving towards. Uh, and so like understanding sort of flight paths. And I, I, I think I feel that. I think I feel like as a juggler, I know better where objects are gonna be um, sooner. So kind of a cool thing. It does not make me less clumsy. I'm still very clumsy, but I'm better at making up for it by catching the things that I drop a lot. So um, I don't think it makes you less clumsy, just better at catching eventually. Um, there's also been some studies to show that the white matter in the brain gets increased. Uh, so a lot of positive effects for uh, juggling. Um, Though so I think you have to take those with a grain of salt. Any any complex task that keeps your brain busy um, does does technically help your brain. So as I found a few articles that were like, oh, the 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 idea of juggling might be oversold, but I really do think it keeps you you know awake and aware. Um, and I think it I think it does. It's just good for your brain, just like any any sort of complex task. So. I hope you guys are enjoying learning some of these uh, juggling skills. Okay. Here comes uh, the next step. How are y'all doing with your two ones? Our next goal is to, we're still doing two ball juggling and you'd be surprised at how much two ball juggling um, relates to three ball juggling. We're like almost, I would say we're 70% of the way to juggling already. I mean, obviously we're two of three balls, so we're pretty close. Um, so here Shall we're gonna do- uh, Shelly, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Shelly <laughs> just said that two one broke her brain. So oh no. I just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny yes i miss getting all the feedback like every every juggler and every person learns juggling different they have different struggles so it's i i'm i'm excited to see some of you working on this all right so the next step and maybe you guys aren't quite ready so take you know keep practicing wherever you need to is one two two, one. Um, if it helps, if you have two different objects, you can think of just tossing the same object each time. So say I've got this red ball and this green ball, I'm just always going to toss the red ball first. So one, two, two, one. One, two, two, one. And so it'll, it means you're kind of going back and forth between that one, two, two, one sort of pattern. Yeah. Looking good. <laughs> oh, you guys are you guys are naturals. This is great. <laughs> Perfect. And to be honest, that is like so close to three ball juggling. So that that pattern right there. We'll just get compressed in the next step. And if at any time you think that like this might be too much, always just step back to the last step. So just practice your one twos or your two ones. Um, but I think you guys are actually pretty close to add in the third ball. Um, so like I said, um, the third ball is not as hard as it might seem juggling might seem out of reach but i believe that you guys could even get close to juggling today um, just by practicing some of these steps often <laughs> perfect often when you have um this when you add the third ball it's gonna it's gonna feel awkward at first and you're like, I can't do it. I don't know what to do, but your brain will automatically get the pattern at some point. It'll just, I think, just sort of click or you'll just have to remind yourself to keep going. So I think those are some of the, the biggest struggles, but we're gonna just jump in because why not? 
why don't you grab a third ball? And there's not too much to it. You're gonna add another ball, whatever hand has two, two balls, and you're gonna throw that one first. Uh-oh. Am I still there? Can you still hear me? You're back now. You froze just for a little bit. Okay. It looks like you can stay there. Still, oh, I'm still alive. That's good. That's great. This is this is lovely. Okay. Um there we go. Okay. Um great. So you're gonna throw the two, the whatever ball or whatever hand has two balls in it, you're gonna throw that one first. And you're just going to try and keep going. It's like a combination of the two, one, one, two. So maybe you'll throw a one, two, one. But you're just going to keep going back from left, right, left, right. There you go. And again, the hard, hardest part is maybe con convincing yourself to keep going. So when you get to here, you need to just keep throwing. <laughs> I like the vitamin jars. I don't think I've seen anybody use vitamin jars before. And so maybe you can tell yourself one, two, one, two, or left, right, left, right. Hey, it's looking good out there. That's great. The pattern that you're going to to hope for, and again, if you're if you're getting your uh, sort of swoops, these little sort of jug patterns here, it should eventually look like a figure eight. It's probably going to look a little chaotic. Oh, Philip. I think you're muted. There we go. Okay. Sorry, I was out again. Okay. You froze out um, when you're about to say um, it looks like a figure eight and it's going to be a little chaotic, I think. Okay. Yeah. So it should look. I guess screen share again. Okay. There we go. There we go. So it should look like this um again like i said it should be might be a little bit chaotic but hopefully you'll eventually get to this pattern and part of that is keeping it in the same plane keeping them kind of um kind of controlled nice um has anybody gotten it for even just a few moments when you start to feel it um, I think one of the reasons they call it flow arts is because at some point your brain just sort of gets it and, and you've hit sort of this, you know, positive psychology flow state, uh, where you're just kind of going and it's working and then you like lose it and you like concentrate too much or it gets too difficult or something like that. Yeah. You can get up there. Um, and so finding these sort of, uh, points where you are. Uh, finding the balance of, of difficulty to um, to your skill level, and then just kind of repeating those over and over and over. I do think juggling is quite attainable. I think people think of it as a, a pretty lofty thing, but it is totally, totally attainable for 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 most people, even fairly quickly. Um, so if you think that it is getting too difficult, just take it back a step, right? Go back to your one twos, two ones, um, any sort of thing like that. Um, one of the things that I find most comforting about juggling is that eventually it becomes this sort of meditative state where you um, 
keep your your juggling balls like and, I, and i've done this before i take them to work with me and i i will like at moments during the day just uh stop and start juggling um it helps keep my brain going and keeps my like if i if i'm kind of you know tired that day it wakes me up and uh especially during uh you know the pandemic where you were you're trapped in in like your house or or your apartment or whatever um it was such a nice sort of escape especially because it feels so tactile you know it's something real that you get to see and feel um and then you know it would help me keep on going through the day so i hope there's a moment that you're even just getting slightly closer to this sort of click moment where you just feel the juggling and again it's it's all that uh sort of tossing pattern um, and then once you have that third ball in there, it just begins to flow and, and continue going. Um, okay. Some things that might happen. Um, maybe you're not getting your, um, maybe it's not working so that you keep throwing, you keep wanting to do the panic pass. Um, one of the things that you can do is to focus on just the throwing. So if you focus on just the throws, you can just throw them up and not catch them at all. And hopefully you'll listen to that thump, thump, thump. Juggling is a pretty rhythmic thing. And so you want to keep your throws as even as possible. So one, two, three. Once you've done that for a few, you can catch one and let two of them drop. Right. And so then just slowly build in the catches as you go. You don't have to catch, but you definitely should throw. <laughs> the catch is always the hard part. So if you can remove that for at least a little bit, um, even when you start moving on to sort of higher numbers of juggling balls, I've had to start over and and just do the throws and not worry about the catches. The catches is always like the stressful part, I think, for juggling for some reason. You know, it's like, oh, it's coming in. Um, another strategy that you could try is partner juggling. Um, hopefully, this is a page from the Juggling to the Complete Klutz, where they're doing some partner juggling. Um, if you're there, we go. Um, <laughs> Zoom doesn't like it when nice. Um, so you could try partner juggling where it, one person is the is the right hand, one person is the left hand, and you sort of share responsibilities. You you take time, and honestly, it's kind of just fun to practice with someone else. Um, it makes it a fun sort of uh, easy. It makes it easier, and you have someone else to to blame blame things on. I guess. <laughs> you make mistakes. Um, so yeah, I recommend partner juggling. Another one, which you guys seem to be doing pretty well, maybe because you have computer screens in front of you already. Um, sometimes you'll want to walk. Keep doing it. My computer is A couple of hi again. <laughs> um, you're talking uh, about walking, and then if you, um, I don't know if you'd pref if it would help if I shared your slides, and I don't know if that would help or. Uh yeah maybe well. I'll I'll keep I'll try one more time if it does it again then we'll we'll switch. Okay. Um, so if you have the tendency to sort of keep walking or wanting to move forward, make sure you focus on the sort of circular movement. Um, another strategy is to stand in front of a wall. So that if you stand in front of a wall, you can't go forward. And sometimes your your ball will just sort of hit off of the wall. You'll be able to 
um, sort of catch it off of that, but it'll help keep you from, from moving forward and eventually you'll stop there. Um, my favorite is standing in front of a bed because then you don't like you drop it and then you don't have to pick it up. Like it's like right there next to you. So standing in front of a bed is like one of the best practices for if you are trying to, you know, run down the hallway or um, and when I was first learning to juggle, this is what I did. I, you just go with it. You just say, OK, I'm going to practice in the hallway and I'm going to run down the hallway and juggle like so that I can learn. Um, you might look a little silly and people be like, what are you doing? You're like, that's OK, <laughs> I'm just learning. So those are a couple of strategies you can do um, to uh, help practice. How's it going out there? Any questions or comments so far? I tend to move to the right. Oh, uh huh. I don't know. Do you use the same strategy for that? Just like have something to your right. I certainly could be. Um, uh, one of the other things that can be difficult is your both your arms kind of have different abilities, and so like maybe your left arm is throwing a little bit higher, higher or further over, and so just sort of focusing on keeping both throws from both hands the same is 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 sometimes a strategy too but yeah you could stand next to a wall too that might work oh yeah juggling is a surprising workout i i guess i didn't mention that before it is <laughs> like um they actually have uh weighted juggling balls that you can buy where they're like a pound or two each and so you're just like I'm throwing them real heavy and slow and it's like it can be it can be quite the workout yeah yes yeah so finding the finding a ball that doesn't drop and roll too much is is, is key i like the balled up socks that's that's good yeah there it is <laughs> cool i actually have the juggling for the complete clutch that i probably bought 35 something years ago and oh, i yeah. never got very far with it so this is as oh. far as i it just this one session here has gotten me farther than i ever got with the book there you go oh good <laughs> glad to help this has been a long process to get you juggling then <laughs> well it was kind of oh. embarrassing to be a programmer who couldn't juggle so i, I you know <laughs> That's funny. That is that is kind of a stereotype in my mind is a uh, programmer or or engineer <laughs> who, who juggles. Love it. Okay. Wait, Wait. that's that's hilarious because I'm going to engineering next fall. So maybe that'll maybe this will help get me in the in crowd. Oh. Librarians are a more forgiving group. <laughs> I was on the math team growing up and it was magic right. there. Like both the card game, but also the, oh, the practice. Oh, uh-huh, nice. Wait, who was that that was on the math okay. team? Did you do Armel? Armel, is that what you said? Yeah. I don't know that. Okay, uh, I think it's, Something something math league American something Rick uh, something something I don't know it's a competition high school competition. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. UIL. All right, so I think I have a few tricks to show you guys. Um, this is probably too soon for you, but I figured I might show you them anyway. Uh, can you guys still see my screen? Am I still moving on the <laughs> Zoom? My Zoom is not happy today for some reason. Yes, everything's running uh, smoothly right now. Great. Okay. So, so far we've been doing sort of these out to in scoops and that's pretty traditional for juggling. Um, but you can go the other direction uh, and you can do an outside scoop as well. I will stop my sharing scene. Um, so the, the, the form that we've been learning is called the cascade, which looks like this. You guys can see that, okay. And it's kind of a figure eight, like we said. 
But if I take one hand, say my right hand, again, because that's my, my good hand, I'm going to scoop it on the outside. And so that my hands will kind of be going like this instead. You get what's called a half shower. And it's not a huge difference, but it makes, it looks just different. So here's the half shower. It's kind of going like a crescent. I think of it as a crescent, big on the outside and then small on the inside. Um, and so just changing your hand orientation. So here's a cascade. Here's the one we almost always start with. And then here's uh, what we call a half shower. So that's a good one um, to, to eventually practice up to. Uh, another fun uh, trick is called the W. And so this middle ball here is going to bounce kind of back and forth, up and down. And these outside ones are going to kind of stay there. So. Do that. Hopefully you can kind of see the W there. Uh, and then I think the best practice that you can ever do is, is sort of a two in one hand practice. And this is actually more difficult than three ball juggling. This is considered a harder trick. Uh, and then practicing it with your other hand, your less dominant hand. And that is also how you get to four ball juggling where you do it on both sides, which is a little bit, <laughs> it take, takes a while. The, the even number of juggling balls, if you have even numbers, they uh, feel different than odd number juggling balls because of the way the patterns work. So with evens, you're kind of working on, on both sides, whereas odd numbers crisscross more. Uh, you certainly can do, um, crisscrosses with even numbers, but it feels a lot different. That's four ball to get your, and that really gets your brain going. You're like, each the left and the right are kind of independent and see so your brain just like, <laughs> it, it can hurt. It's great. Yeah. Cool. But the, the two in one hand, I think is probably the best practice that you could ever do for three, um, three ball juggling. So I really do recommend that. Cool. Are there any questions that you guys have about juggling so far? Do you have a favorite type of juggling balls or preferred type? Ooh. Um, I don't like anything that bounces and rolls away. These are pretty good. These are just like uh, bean baggy kind of things. So anything that's bean baggy, these ones are they're just the right size for me. Um, they're, I think they're two and a half inch bean bags. Um, they sell them by size, but really it's hard to know without like actually like trying them, you know? Um, there's kind of a balance between having the right weight and not being too big, especially when you get to the higher numbers because you're trying to put like three in one hand or, or even four, you're trying to stack them up there and they can get like, you know, your hands are only so big, and so you're like trying to hold them all. Um, but I think uh, I, I was looking online not too like there there were quite a few that I think any standard juggling ball that you like Amazon or Google it it shows up some some pretty solid uh, ones. Yeah, I lost the juggling ball in here somewhere. I don't know where it went. Oh. All right, um, but do, do, as you guys continue your juggling careers, I have uh, a couple of uh, suggestions. This is uh, Taylor Glenn. She's a YouTube juggler. Um, and I think she does a really great job of some of the explanations. Uh, I know I learned a lot about five ball juggling from her. And, and I think she does, she has a really good breakdown. So if you want to continue with three ball juggling, I think she has a great uh, resource. Uh, and I think you, so 
Philip, I think you froze on us. Zoom really doesn't like juggling. That's what I've learned. My goodness. All right. All right, Zoom. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure where I left off, but Taylor tries. Um, great juggler. Um, really, really helpful tutorials. So I hopefully, if you if you want to look up, but but really any uh, YouTube, um, you know, research is is going to be helpful for you. Um. I also really like the library of juggling. That's where I got a lot of these sort of animations. So they teach you a lot of tricks. So if you're um, getting that free ball pattern down, I recommend checking them out. And, and I think they've got some tricks. Some other simple tricks that you can try. Um, if you want to start playing around, um, I suggest under the leg. Even just getting it, like start with an under the leg pass. And there are sort of four different ways you can go under the leg. So you can go from outside on either leg. Let me stop my screen share so you can see a little bit better. So you're going to go from outside, but you can also go from the inside. Ooh. Try not to hit anything. Your piano this is not my normal juggling space. So there's outside. There's inside. If you really want to get going, thought that other stuff was a workout. You just keep going all day. <laughs> um, so yeah, under the leg, um, some throws. You could throw it really high up in the air. Um, if you're juggling apples or fruit, this is the key time to eat a bite of your apple that you're juggling. There's like a classic juggling trick where you throw one really high, take a bite of your apple, and then catch your next throw. Cool. Um, I also wanted to share with you some sort of, the world of juggling is, is very silly. They've got lots of different competitions and stuff like this. I think my favorite silly uh, juggling competition is maybe what they call joggling, uh, which is a combination of running and juggling. Um, <laughs> and they, just run. So let's see if we can skip. Uh, it is the strangest thing. Oh, wait. Oh, he's ready to go. There you go. The world juggling 400 meter champion. <laughs> There's a whole world of juggling activities. Another strange juggling competition uh, is called combat. Uh, and juggling combat is typically done with clubs. So everybody's got clubs that they're juggling. And they're usually doing just a simple three pattern. And the goal is to be the last juggler standing. So whoever uh, can still keep juggling at the end will win. Um, and so here are some teams. Uh, and they'll try and knock other people's juggling clubs out. And it is just so silly. I know you're allowed to um, capture other people's juggling clubs. You can actually just steal other people's juggling clubs, and that counts as uh, getting 
as as winning for the for juggling combat. So there's all sorts of silly juggling uh, competitions. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I wanted to show you two of my favorite juggling tricks before uh, I leave you all and give you just a few minutes for some questions. Juggling, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think probably my favorite trick is called a is called the Georgian shuffle. So I'm going to have these guys here. Shuffles are generally juggling moves where you throw two at once or catch two balls at the same time. Um, and this one looks more complicated than it is, but it's a lot of fun. And so you throw two up in the air and then catch them kind of in this cool swoopy motion. So this is called the Georgian shuffle. And I just like how symmetric it is. I think the um, my next favorite trick is is called Mills Mess, and this is one where you first start sort of crisscrossing your arms, and so you're basically just juggling, but at the same time um, crisscrossing your arms back and forth, and so the balls kind of go from the left to the right. And this is definitely one of the tricks where I don't think I could teach it. Like I know how to do it, but I can't explain it. Like my brain just knows how to do it now. And I and like if somebody asked me like, hey, how do you do that? I would have, I would say I have no idea. But it's nice and fun. It's like a fun fluid one where it goes back and forth. Um, yeah. That's, uh, I think, most of what I had. There's also a little bit of math involved with site swap and stuff like that, but I think that's most of the time we have today. So uh, any last few questions? <laughs> Looking great. Get out Bye. there and juggle. And I think, thank you so much. Um, I hope I hope you guys are uh, having fun. Make sure you Grab some juggling balls, keep them, keep them by your desk or or whatnot. Um, yeah, just enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Philip. And thank you all for um, participating today. Um, I look forward to seeing you at other TCDL sessions. Have a great rest of your day.